uh, a couple, uh, what, two weeks ago, thereabouts? Three, three or four weeks. Uh, or, yeah, and uh, I thought that was, you know, I, I enjoyed doing it. And then I said, well, you know, I've got this, this base and I've got all this stuff. And one thing I hate to do is to make things for demonstration and throw them away. It just seems a big waste. I know a lot of people, you know, they'll cut a dovetail and then as soon as they do the, the 90, they throw it away. But I, uh, so I, I, I think in, a, in the moment of uh, heat of the battle, I uh, said, okay, well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll finish it up and uh, you know, continue on with it. So uh, I did, and that's what this video is all about. Um, it, it's, uh, it took me five and a half hours to do what you see in this video. The video is only like four minutes or four and a half minutes. Uh, we can stop the video anytime you want if you have a question or, or, or whatever. We could go back to it, you know, or we could watch the whole thing and I'll talk through it. It goes kind of fast, but uh, uh, we can go through it once and then go back and look at another scene or whatever. And I'll try to keep up with the, the narration as we, we go along. Uh, like I said, it took me uh, uh, about five and a half so hours to do this. Um, a little bit uh, last week, a couple of an hour the other day, and then about uh, I, I think about three hours today. Uh, and I did something different, and what you'll see, you'll notice something kind of a little bit unusual about the uh, the tabletop. So on that note, let's uh, let's do it. Let's right. play the movie. Let's see if I can figure out how to play this. Yeah, just share screen and then click on that. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, this this is basically the two pieces. We're seeing it. Fine. What's that? We we are getting it. Okay, so. you you got it. Okay, I'm gonna just start playing it and. Um, okay, here's these are the after the glue up that we uh, we did the other day. You can see how rough and ugly and cobbled up and square and beat up it looks. And right there, there's a big nasty place that will tear out that I didn't want to route. And you can just see how, um, what, quick and dirty, for lack of a better word, but the, the joint is good and it's at 90 degrees. Uh, everything is uh, perpendicular and flush. Uh, I would normally take it down a little bit more. And, and this is after a few minutes of uh, using this guy right here, if you can see it. Yeah. Um, here, let's uh, you pause want to, this for a second. Okay, just, Okay, I don't know what you're doing. I can't see me. Okay, all right. <laughs> there, let's play it again. Okay, uh, if, if you can see this, this is the file that I used. Now I'm developing a hard line. That's what I'm pointing at. Uh, you, you notice that I'm reducing mass, uh, visual mass. I'm, I'm just making it to where it flows in and uh, it's just going to town. I wish I could work that fast. But yeah, I'm, I'm... Make it, everything get a yeah. little faster, right? But I'm just using a Nicholson 49 that has been recently resharpened, uh, cuts like like fantastic, and I'm really trying to maintain. Okay, now this. Okay, here here we we're gonna. You see the little. Oop, I'm gonna go back just a little bit. Okay, you see right there. Can you see the cursor? See this little area right here. Somebody, if you can, it's not quite round. And then when I start it back up, the next picture is after I've spent. A few minutes. Okay, see there. See how that that contour goes away, and it's a nice, nice sweep. Okay, and that's all by eye and by hand, using the tool as a uh, to kind of fill in. Uh, this guy I sanded down to four thousand grit. Uh, the bases I'll sand to four thousand. The top, I only sand to 400, and I'll, I'll talk about that when it gets there. Uh, I spend 90% of the time in 120, and then I go, then I double it, 120, 220, 400, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000. Not quite exact, but that's, that's my step. There's the 1,000 uh, Vestool paper. And then I, I think I edited out the, the 4,000, I think, when you, kind of get that. Uh, 
but then it just gets nicer and nicer and that hard line starts to become more noticeable, uh, adds a little bit of visual interest and it, it, it helps your eye not see the mass as big as it is. And, uh, okay, we're getting there. Okay, a little bit more, I don't know why. Uh, again, after five hours. Okay, now I'm oiling the top. I use, this happens to be uh, uh, varnish, tongue oil, and uh, linseed oil. You notice the wood is really dark and black. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I charred the wood and then I sanded it down to 400. Um, that's why it's so dark. I, I've been wanting to do that for a long time and, and it really, uh, I'm really pleased with the outcome. It, it, it kind of round, it softens the edges and <laughs> it kills any bugs that happen to be in the, the rescue wood, which my wife would appreciate. Uh, your, your daughter would love the spiders, right? Yeah, I mean, that she, I don't think she'd be, she'd really... I won't, I won't tell her that, I won't tell her that. Now, the, the varnish, the varnish tongue and linseed oil goes on so nicely. Uh, and this is only after one coat. I usually do about three coats. Uh, a week apart, uh, it, it, it builds up a really beautiful, it feels like, uh, w with, when you sand to 4,000, it feels like ivory. So super smooth, and, and there it is. There it is. I think it's a table. You yeah. can sit on it, but I don't think it would. Uh, Okay, and there, that's what it started to look like, or that's what it started off. And uh, it's amazing the transformation after only five hours. You know, and it, it's, it, if it were twice as big, it would take 10 hours and et cetera. I mean, it, it is kind of a linear thing. It just takes time, um, time to do. Transformation. Okay, enough already. There it is. That's it. That's my brand, or my my what my trademark. Trademark, yeah, whatever you, whatever that thing's called. Maker's mark. Maker's mark. There you go. Okay. Well, that was uh, quick and dirty. And uh, you guys got any questions? Uh, oh, you want to? Oh, go. And maybe put the top on, and everyone can see uh, what it looks like assembled. And okay. Well, here I'm gonna put this guy right here. Right. Can you see it? Uh, let's see. Let me get this thing. I have a question. Maybe you could talk about like when you start to sculpt the base. Do you have like a plan, or do you sort of just put metal to wood and sort of let it take its own shape, or do you do you like pre-visualize it, or do you sort of start off with an idea and let it decide itself, or how do you go about deciding the shape of like your sculpting? Yeah, there, there's some things that, you know, I've done this uh, style of base many times and I like the, the formation of these hard lines uh, on the leg, you know, there's a little hard line right here, again, I don't, there we go, little hard lines right here, and then I try to mimic them up here, and it, I really don't have a, I don't know exactly where that hard line's going to be, I just do it till it looks good, and then I form it in. Um, and uh, same way with the, the legs. But uh, I just love the, the way that this darkened... Uh, uh, yeah, move it closer so we can look at You know, this guy here. It, it, and, and I like the contrast of the old gnarly uh, burned wood. And, you know, it, there's no residual. It's got one coat of oil on it. And there's no... It doesn't rub off or anything. Uh, I was talking earlier that I really like the round, when you burn the uh, edges, it, it kind of takes off the hard edge and it, it makes it, it softens a little bit. I really like that. And then where the wood is softer, like right here, the, the, this is the, the sap wood and it really burns and it, it adds a lot of character. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh... Yeah, it, it, it uh, you know, I like the, the contrast between the, the perfectly in quotes, made base yep. with kind of a rustic but elegantly finished top. 
So that, that's, that's what this guy's all about. And I wouldn't have made it unless Kevin wanted to demo the pocket joint, which I think is really viable. Yep. Uh, for, it can be used for elegant furniture. Uh, it can be used for uh, you know, using the rescue wood. Uh, very flexible. So I'll take the top off so you could show people that didn't see the, basically exactly what the pocket joint is. Yeah, the like. pocket joint is how we, we cut these guys out and make them fit perfectly in this. You make this guy and then you, you set it on the top and then you put plywood uh, mar or, uh, spacers down to use it as a guide for a router bit. Uh, very uh, very and, simple. And pretty much the first video, uh, we covered that pretty much and sh showed exactly how, the, how that was done. And, and, uh, and it's actually uh, like my, my coffee table that I made, it uses exactly the same thing. And I think there's a picture of that coffee table on the website. Uh, you know, round table with five legs but uh yeah and it, it's uh, a good way to like, like he just said to fit the tops on the uh um, yeah or you're making a chair with the same uh, joinery yeah for the for the uh, seat of the chair or the the base for the chair it basically fits into the legs using the same pocket joints and, and this guy right. is becoming my new friend <laughs> uh comment on the product you use for the finish you said linseed oil, palm oil, and yeah. varnish. Uh, were they, is this your own mix or is this some commercial product? No, it, it's my own mix. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's a finish that they've been using for years and years and years. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you can buy basically a similar thing commercially. But what I find is I, I like linseed oil and varnish, uh, spar varnish. It's a little thick, so sometimes I'll put in uh, mineral spirits. And then sometimes to, if I think it's going to get a little more like sunlight or a little bit more abuse, I'll put a little bit of tongue oil in it. Uh, tongue oil is fairly expensive. Uh, I think it adds a little bit, but I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I, I do kind of, you know, I've done it a lot, enough where I, I just kind of mix it up like I want. Uh, and I'll mix up. You know, I'll buy a, a gallon of linseed oil, a gallon of uh, 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 varnish, uh, and then I'll mix it up. And if you notice, this guy here, I made this uh, 721. I'll, I'll mix it up, buy the cans at Home Depot, and I've got tons of it. I've got some... Uh, no, no, the stuff that I used a year and a half ago, I think that was like 15 years old or something. Yeah, or no, yeah. No, no, no. The longer it sits, the better it is. Um, let me see here. Yeah, here, here's some stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, uh, the mix, which is linseed oil and uh, uh, varnish, and I tongue oil, and I put beeswax in it. It just adds another little texture. Uh, and this was made, I don't think I have a date on this one. And this is 61421. This is 5050, the, the mixture plus uh, mineral spirits. So, mineral, yeah, I've experimented enough. I like the little bit runnier stuff. Just the, uh, this, this stuff I put on this guy is really thick, like honey. Uh, and sometimes I, it doesn't uh, go into the uh, pores enough uh, on something really finely. You know, like if the top had been finished to this extent, I probably would have put a little mineral spirits, but uh, I love the, the uh, linseed oil-based finishes. Uh, they, they, you, can buy, what's, uh, you can buy all kinds of stuff over the counter uh, commercially. Yeah, like Rockler has a bunch, a big selection of like the Sam Maloof oil. Yeah, the Maloof stuff. oil. There's like a poly uh, mix. Yeah, what is poly that? Poly varnish mix is what that is. That's what yeah, there, there's, but they're, re, what, I've, what I've done is I've read what's in the, uh, the MSDS, Material Data Safety Sheets. And if you notice, most of the stuff, most of the commercially available products really don't tell you what's in it. You know, proprietary knowledge or, you know, the stuff that's in the, uh, the Maloof oil, I don't know what it is. Yep. So, uh, hey, I've been using this for 40 years and, it, it, you know, and variations of it, it's, it's great. Uh, Beautiful. I, I love talking about the finishes because people really kind of like to, to do the, the fancy stuff. Yep. This stuff works fine. Cheap.
reasonably cost? What's far on this do you use? Uh, McCluskey's. Uh, we can, contrary to public opinion, we can still buy uh, McCluskey's spar varnish in uh, quartz. Uh, and it, it's totally available. Now I, if I need uh, to mix up some mix, I'll buy, you know, I'll accumulate a couple, three quarts of uh, uh, McCluskey's spar varnish and mix it up and it's totally legal. It, it, you can't buy it in gallons in California. Uh, I don't know why. But it's California. Yeah, yeah California. California. That's okay. California. Yeah. We have workarounds. Again, it, it's totally legal. It's it's totally cool. Uh, I I used to use the Maloof oil from Rockler, but about five years ago they changed the formulation, and uh, uh, it it's not the same stuff. I don't know what it was to begin with, but the stuff that they sell now, uh, I quit using. Mm -hmm. um, well, they, they put more of the. Uh, Stuff. But yeah, they, they put it, it's more uh, I think water uh, less VOCs and all that. So Does that answer your question, Kenny. Uh, yeah, that was Kenny. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I got I got several cans of McCluskey's. If, uh, <laughs> uh, any other uh, any other questions about finish type stuff? Uh, what do you uh, What do you use, Jay, for your work? Uh, well, it kind of depends what I'm doing. I I. Uh, I like Osmo, um, a wonderful product. And, yeah. uh, I, I learned a, a hard lesson recently. I did a, a knee wall uh, uh, in our home, and we, I put a cherry block on it that was about two inches thick as the sill sitting on top of the knee wall. And my wife, uh, after I finished it with the Osmo, she put... Uh, plants uh, in little <laughs> small pots on yeah. top of the knee wall. And it looked great. And uh, I happened to be in the house one day and I heard her kind of, oh my gosh. And I came over and there was beautiful ultraviolet effect of where the pots had been sitting. Yeah. Um, you know, where, where it's darker, where the sun had exposed, right. less dark, where, where the pots had been sitting. So I called Osmo and I said, hey, <laughs> What's this? And they said, oh, well, what wood did you use? And I said, cherry. And they said, oh, cherry is very UV sensitive. And I said, you know, it'd be nice to know that. that on the can, you know, that this is, doesn't give you any UV protection. Yeah. So they actually make a product that's UV yeah. protected. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I completely redid it. I, and I don't know how I got this still off because it was uh, down with a pretty significant adhesive the yeah. liquid nails. And uh, was able to pop it off and take it back out to the shop. I took the finish completely off and put the uh, Osmo with, with with the UV protection, and it's done beautifully. Yeah. Now it's been in back in place uh, yeah. for several months, and I don't have any more of that UV effect. Did you have any? Uh, did Did you uh, have any? Oh. Did I'm you, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any trouble with the cherry kind of splotching with the the? the in my experience, no, and I didn't precondition it. Sometimes, okay. If I'm not sure, I'll take a piece of scrap and check it out. Show, yeah, yeah. See if I need to precondition. Cool. You certainly need to do that with the lighter colors. But, yeah. Uh, and then another product that I love is uh, Rubio Monaco. Yeah, um, no. If you had a chance to use that at all, was it Rubio Monaco? Rubio Monaco. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful. One. What's what I love the most about it is it's a uh, one coat application, yeah. almost almost always no no run lines, no drips. It's just you basically trowel it on with a plastic uh, spatula, right? And then you, and then you let it sit for a while. It's an absorptive product, and uh, then you uh, uh, rub off the excess. Okay. Let it cure. And it does a beautiful job. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, I like the, the to read the MSDS sheets um, you know the uh, see what's in it see what's in the finishes uh, Odie's oil that that's yeah. one that everybody is talking about now that's expensive stuff yeah yeah, yeah I mean geez I, I took my breath away yeah and, well, yeah, you know uh, I, I thought that the first time I used Osmo but it just goes so far okay I mean a quart of it's about fifty dollars or so yeah 
but uh, and the same the you know, Rubio is expensive as well. But you use so tiny, much tiny amounts. Just, okay. Yeah, it just goes a long way, so it doesn't prove really to be. I mean, it, it chokes you when you buy the can, but <laughs> yeah. but, it, but yeah, I mean, per application and square area that you're applying to, it's actually pretty reasonable. And it's durable. Oh yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I think yeah, and I think Oli's oil was a good one, and I did mention that I've used that as well. That's um, yeah. an excellent product. Yeah. And it's nice. Uh, that's a nice product if you're looking for like a charcuterie board or a cutting board. Yeah. It's, a, it's food sense, food uh, safe. I think on Odie's oil, I, I read something about it does have linseed oil and other, I think, varnish in it. And the, there's a caveat that for, for cutting boards and that sort of thing, I think after it cures, it's totally inert. Right. I, I, you know, read it yourself, uh, um, and uh, I, I, I think the best, you know, do you use mineral oil for your cutting boards and stuff? Oh yeah, you can't go wrong. Yeah, that, that. And uh, you know, the big, the big box stores all, all cut it, carry something that's got beeswax and mineral oil, and yeah. they sell it as cutting board oil. Um, they also have a, a product they call cutting board conditioner. Yeah. So when you just first make the board, you put the conditioner on. And then when you, uh, after you've had some use, you start adding the, you know, the adding the oil. So whenever I make a board and I give it away or sell it, I always, uh, I, it always goes with the bottle of the oil. Oh, yeah. And I, and I tell the client that they, they never, it never goes in the dishwasher. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, <laughs> I actually kind of a, a variation. I've made uh, lots of case goods with drawers. And that sort of thing and I've always after I've made the drawer and finished it I finish inside and out and everything and I use my drawers look just as good as the the case and then I, I, I use my linseed oil mix but then I have to I, I keep the doors open uh, the drawers open for a week because if you close you know if you oil it with the linseed oil varnish mix you close the drawers and you open it back up and it, it, it knocks you over the first couple of weeks. And somebody told me, and it makes sense, you should use, for the inside of drawers, you should use mineral oil. You know, it, it absorbs in, it doesn't, you know, you wipe it all off and it doesn't have that smell. Right. And also it will never go rancid and sometimes linseed oil can go rancid. You know, I mean, it, it, it if it's in a, a, a a closed environment, it get it, it rots, and and I I've, I've seen a couple or I've smelled a couple of those. And I said okay, but now I use the mineral oil on the inside of drawers, just as a. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's good. Uh, so what, one of the other things we're doing here is uh, just general questions. So we have some other people here. If you have uh, like Randy, if you have any questions, or uh, Mr. Uh, Zoom user there, if you got any questions. <laughs> Uh, we're, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to talk to, talk about, we're, you know, like what, what are your projects, what are you working on? And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you covered this on the first um, class uh, because I didn't, I didn't get in on that one, but um, could you address, um, I, I assume that, that the technique you used on the top was the shoshugi ban, where you burn it, it's the Japanese I, shoshugi ban method. Uh, I burned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the, it's the technical term is shoshugi ban. Shoshugi ban. I call it. Okay. And then it kind of <laughs> preserves it. But then, what did you do? And I, it looks like that's a walnut slab. That that right? is a walnut. Okay, I've done that on uh, a softer woods like a pine or yeah. whatever. Um, so what did you did you use a wire brush on it after you burned it or sand it or what? Well, the, the first thing I did is I wire brushed the whole thing, all of the, the live edge, I mean, a, a lot, with a heavy uh, steel uh, wire brush. And then I sanded it to uh, 120 to, to make it, you know, uh, get, get me a starting place, because I've never done this before. And then I got my uh, map gas guy 
and I just torched it. And I actually charred the uh, the top layer of the walnut. It actually, you could see where it uh, there was alligatoring a little bit. I mean, tiny bits of alligatoring. Uh, and then after that happened, I sanded the heck out of it back with uh, 120. Uh, and I was a little concerned that the, the soot would come off, but I sanded it down to 400 after all of that. And uh, then I put the oil on it recently. And like I said, the, the, it, 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 I may do some higher quality tabletops using this method because it, it really was fun to do. Uh, I liked the way that the flame uh, rounded over the hard edges or the, the really sharp edges. Uh, I don't know if you can see it right here, but where the the heartwood burned faster than the uh, the heartwood burned faster than the, or the uh, sap would burn faster than the heartwood, and it just adds a little character to it. It's, uh, I'm, you know, learning something at uh, seventy two. I've, I've never used, I've just never used it on walnut. I've done a lot of live at walnut, but I've never used it. But if you if you research it and look it up on the on the internet, it's called shoshugi bon, and it's okay. an ancient. Um, Japanese technique of wood preservation, and they do burn the wood to a char. That 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 preserves it too. What's that? It preserves it also. Yes, it preserves it. Cool. I, I see. I love. Thank you, Kevin, for you know. I I, I didn't know that. I love it. So, yeah, you, you stumbled on it. Didn't yeah. You? Hey, didn't I didn't know. invent this. <laughs> What, what are your symbols? Well, nowadays it's uh, more for looks, but back in the day before they had the high-tech oils and stuff, that used to be... It, it did preserve it. I'll be darned. Yeah, so Randy, what's, uh, what, what, are, what are some of your... Uh, if Dennis had asked you before doing this, what would some of your advice have been? To, yeah. You know, as far as what? For, for, for doing the uh, charring it and stuff, what's... Uh, shishugi bond, man. Yeah, shishugi yeah, the yeah. Shishugi bond. Yeah. I've only done it on softwood, so whenever you showed it on, on the walnut, I, I hadn't even thought of doing it on the walnut. It, it creates a good effect. It you know, brings out the really dark areas and stuff, and so I, I'll probably try that on, on some stuff. Okay, now... But, on the softer woods, it sort of brings out the texture a little bit more too, doesn't it? Like, well, I'm sure it would like burn. It, 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 it will burn. It will burn this the sap wood. So, like, if you take a, a piece yeah. of pine, you know, go to Home Depot or whatever and buy a two by six, and then take your torch and torch it all the way till it chars, and then use a wire brush and scrub it, and it will. It, it gives a texture because the late wood. You know, the hardwood right. will actually form ridges and the, the softwood, the, the sapwood will kind of burn in. So it'll give it a, a piece of texture. Fascinating. Now, I, I have to confess that I like this so much that I cooked this guy. I mean, I burned it. It, it was a crispy critter. Yeah, it's the same, same shade of... Uh... And it was, because it's so finely made and, and all that kind of stuff, it looked truly boring. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to sand it, I sanded it completely down uh, and finished it to my usual 4,000 grit. And uh, it, I was impressed at how bad this looked burned and how great this, this gnarly piece of, uh, uh, Walnut, uh, I think it's Clara Walnut. Uh, look, totally different. Uh, two, two, two diff totally different animals. I'm gonna have to check out that. What is it? Shoshogi? Yeah, I'll have to figure out. What, what, what species of wood are the legs made of? Is it also walnut? It or is. Or yeah, it, black walnut, uh, probably from uh, Indiana thereabouts. Uh, this guy here is probably California uh, Claro walnut. Uh, it, it's the only species of walnut that grows native in Northern California. Uh, and it, it's really desirable if you can get, you, you can get really nice pieces of this and make furniture. I've, I've, uh, I've made several pieces. But this piece is just, it was a, a throwaway. And I'm, I love it. So, uh, 
I love walnut. I, I do 90% of what I make is out of walnut. So, yep. Uh, any more questions? Uh, Steve, do you have any any specific questions of any type for, because you, you mentioned you're doing the wood turning and getting into things and is there any... Uh... Maze, how long did it take you to assemble the legs before you started finishing we, we did that in an afternoon right that was all uh, from from the so he had done the the uh, cutting out the legs where it was actually done ahead of time right from yeah okay the 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 legs i was going to do a three-legged stool for a long time and i cut out uh, that was one right there. Yeah. i cut um i cut out blocks rectangular blocks a, a long time ago, you know, this is just six quarter uh, walnut and it was a, a rectangle, you know, there's a 90 and a 90 and I cut these blocks out and then I did this this form right here and this and I left this guy a block. Uh, and I did that a long time ago and then when Kevin wanted to do this uh, a demonstration, uh, I said, oh, okay, now's a good time to do this. So basically, uh, it, it took, how long, it, it took effort having the rough block and two bandsaw cuts, it only, it took, it took a few hours to go from that to this. What, what kind of joints did you use? Uh, these are dominoes, dominoed. Domino. Are you familiar with domino? No. Okay, uh, we, the, the first one that we did, you might wanna go back and, and watch that. It really uh, kind of explains uh, the simplicity of this, you don't have to use dominoes, you could use splines. Okay. Uh, you All could right. use dowels, you could use any other method of joinery. All right. Uh, Good. Uh, so, but it, th this, that was another reason I wanted to do this, is this project only took, even, even though we were filming and, and doing all that kind of stuff, it only took us like six hours. Right. Including the filming, to totally make this and get to the, the start of the video that you just saw, where it was all gnarly and, and cobbled up and it didn't fit right, but all the joinery was perfect, all of the angles were perfect. The rest of it is just uh, hand work with my favorite grinders and uh, Nicholson 49s and all that. Mm -hmm. Looks nice, very nice. Uh, it, it is a very appealing. I wish I wish you could handle it. It, it it's like uh, uh, what is it like uh, uh, ivory? It yeah, just, it's, it's, it's super smooth and just uh, yeah. Four thousand. We we sand to four thousand grit. Now you're a wood turner, and basically we're burnishing the wood like you would do on a, a lathe. You know the old timer right. lathes guys would get all the the, the turning uh, scraps. So, or, the, the, uh, yeah, sawdust. The wood chips. Yeah, wood chips, and then just burnish the wood, and burnish that's what we're doing with the four thousand. So. Okay. Yeah, no, and the, uh, the the link to the video is under the past workshops on the website, uh, and it's hiding in there somewhere. And it's basically, you know, it has has a picture of this thing is uh, on it, and it's uh, it's it's maybe the presentation is about. 30 something minutes, but the first 15 minutes is the, you know, the condensed video showing all this, going through all the steps. And uh, we, you know, kind of like this time we didn't want to, uh, you know, even though we, I'm sure everyone would love to see a four hour video of <laughs> yeah. the five hour, you know, it's like better to condense it down and talk about yeah. it real quick. But when then, when uh, I first put all the, the uh, photos and stuff I had, it was 38 minutes and I said, nah, now we got to cut this down to something uh, manageable. Yep. Uh, but the, the this type of joint is, uh, I mean, uh, I, I didn't know better when I was making my coffee table. But he's like, okay, this is this is a quick way to put the top on on the table. You know, it's a, it has five legs, and you, you have to have everything pretty much lined up perfectly and cut perfectly. So because if not, when you stick the legs together with a domino, it would be lopsided. And, yeah. You know, weren't really. Yeah, you got to be ninety, and and and, and it, it uh, it's such it's so simple, and I I I have. I can do extremely complicated joinery and, like I say, dovetails and all that, but I don't. I like the freedom that some of these methods uh, have. 
because I, like I say that my theme is I think of something I want to make and then I figure out how to make it I don't really care uh, what I have to do to, to accomplish it yep. um, so yeah, as opposed to uh, well Ed, Ed Rizzardi is not here today or yesterday but you know he'll be back next Monday and uh, he, he <laughs> has the opposite view of where he'll uh, you know, cut everything out and measure everything perfectly and yeah, he, uh, it, it, it's just, it's funny, he can cut. I asked Ed to do a little project uh, for a, a, a demonstration, and I said, I need a couple of pieces of wood, three inches by four inches by an inch and a half. And he came back and he says, here's that piece of wood within two thousandths. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was just for a demonstration. Good, good guy to, to be around. He makes you uh, work a little harder to be a little more accurate. Yep. Uh, more questions from anyone? For, is there any subjects anyone wants to... It, pretty much anything from basics to more advanced things, we're, uh, you know, we're here to talk about it. Not me, him. I, I have a general idea of everything. You, you, yeah. you, you got to... Well, as, as you can see, this is a two-way conversation. Yeah. I have never, you know, I've seen people burning the wood. I didn't know that it was, a, you know, the, tr the Japanese tradition. Yeah. And I saw it, and I said, oh, that's cool. And then it made sense to do it on this guy. Yeah. So I, I'm, uh, makes me sad I, I didn't invent friend. it. What's that? I had, a, I had a friend who did that to his whole house, and uh, it's supposed to, somewhat make it fireproof I think yeah but it's a neat method um, yeah uh, I've used it a couple of times and um, I think online they have uh, different people have different ways of going about it but typically I've heard they use linseed oil as well yeah, use linseed oil you, yeah, you broke up there. Yeah, he's up on yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you got to have a finish on it, or the soot. I imagine the soot would keep coming out. But uh, just one coat. I'm impressed at the 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 uh, the burned cellulose is now encapsulated in uh, in the finish. I think so. Wonderful. Yeah, and I I also uh, I carved a really giant like chainsaw carving like a bear in my front yard and I use that method and we, we have winters out here and a lot of rain and snow out in Illinois and it, it's held up through the winter um, it really does preserve oh, interesting how, like, how long has it lasted you? so far it's been about a year and a half um, so you a year and a half ago you carved like a bear with a chainsaw and then you burned it and oiled it and it's out there for a year and a half and it's still doing all right yeah yeah cool <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> that's yeah. fucking awesome man yeah it's, just, it's it's a neat method that sounds like, like you got it. some good hobbies and it looks good it yeah. looks good. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm like i like to say you know what what other people do in this arena just just fascinate me i, I wish i could visit every one of all of you guys. Uh, I might. <laughs> I've been known to do that. Yeah. We would uh, we would burn the end of small diameter sticks into a point. Yeah. When I was a child, and we would make our own bow and arrows and go after <laughs> birds, but the the burning hardens it also. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the farmers up home would burn the ends of their fence posts it, to preserve it. Yeah, from the rainwater. To preserve them. Oh yeah. It, it must like add sort of carbonize it, you know? Yeah, add a little bit of carbon, and yeah. that's what they make the heat shield of the space shuttle out of. You know, so that stuff lasts. <laughs> yeah, it's like impressionable. Uh, just like I said, cool. I haven't, I haven't done any of my turnings with the flame yet, but uh, after listening to you, watching you, I'm 
probably going to step up and do something. I, quick. It, it, and I'd love to see it, man, because I, I could I could only imagine what that would you know I mean it, just the it, just an endless variety of things that could be experimented with and looked at. Um, but I, I'm thinking that it would it would eliminate the, my need for sanding a whole lot. Yeah. Because I'd just kind of burn it and get rid of the carbon and throw some linseed oil on it and leave it and not sand it a whole lot at all. So I gotta try that. I, I uh, gee, Kevin, we got another demo. We got to get, can you film it <laughs> or video it? <laughs> I tried to do a video. All, all I have is the iPhone. Hey, and I, that's and what I, I did. Tried, yeah. I tried to do a video with it. I got, uh, I got an automatic clicker to turn it on and off. I thought <laughs> I was doing great. And I would work a little bit and stop it and then, change yeah. things and work a little bit, stop it again and go. And I ended up with like five or six short videos. Yeah. And I don't know how to put them together. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, learning curve. Hey, iPhone's all you need. Yeah. I, like I have a YouTube channel. I only got like 600 subscribers, but all I got is an iPhone to videotape. And I use iMovie and I just cut them down and it works. Do yeah. you do that on your phone also? Yeah. Yeah. I like I have a computer and I have like a better video editing software program, mm -hmm. but it's so freaking complex. Like it gives me a thousand choices to where I just want to like yeah. speed it up <laughs> and like you know cut it. And so I just use my phone. It's way simpler and it. I think it turns out better just because like it's not overly complicated. You know. Keep it simple. Says says you. Yeah, said 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 you forty year old dude, uh, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Although uh, Steve, if you want, uh, we could talk later or some other time, and I, you know, I, I would love yeah. I would love to see your experimenting with that. I mean, it because it, it opens up a lot of uh, interesting avenues. I, I, you know, I've never never heard of that before. Yeah. How would how would I go about just sending you? Uh, a short video clip, just email it? Yeah, email it? To uh, you, you have my email address and you just email the stuff to me. We'll talk ahead of time or whatever it is. But uh, All right, yeah. so, so <laughs> I'll start tomorrow and I'll do some okay. videos and I'll just send them to you and you can look at them and if you want to play with them and put them together, go ahead. I, but, I, uh, you're on. Okay, try what I really thought was cool, I don't know how, you see the, the uh, sapwood and the heartwood yeah. and, and a little bit of bark. If you yeah. could find a piece of wood that has a mix of heart and sapwood and then spin it and cook it and see what it turns, see, see how it works. <laughs> we ran them off. Hey, Dennis, I, I have a question for you. I'm sorry, I want to wait for a minute. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But I want to show you this. We'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, oh, it's like a live edge ball or something? Yeah. So it's actually got sap wood. It's got heart on. Oh, well, I think. Not heart. <sighs> What's that little thing that goes down through the center of a tree? The pit, pit? pith. Pith. Yeah. <laughs> it's got pith on both ends, and then the live edge. I, I I think with a little creativity, I think that would look really cool with some soot and burn. I gotta. I gotta get a better. Just show you that. <laughs> I call yeah, it soot and burn. That's so cool. Anyway, I'll throw something together. I'll start tomorrow. Okay. I'll just go right from scratch. Go for it, man. Yeah. And All right. right. You know the, the the best the best thing about making videos as a woodworker is you know you you need a, a stand to hold your camera steady and most woodworkers I know have a million clamps lying around and you know that actually. 
makes it a bit easier. You know, you don't need to go out and buy a buy yeah. anything special. This, this is what I use, you know, just <laughs> right. Yep. You do that, clamp it to something else and <laughs> Uh, uh, you, you, you had a question. The other guy had a question there. Yeah, yeah. My name is JC. Dennis, I, I have a question Casey. for Dennis. Um, I, I, you know, woodworking is new to me, but I've been doing carpentry and carvings. But getting into fine furniture uh, building is something I'm interested in. And uh, when I'm on the forums, it 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 seems, and and I, I could be wrong that everyone defines fine furniture as some type of, you know, mortise and, and tenon. Um, I've seen your work and your work is definitely fine furniture and you're using, you know, different styles of, um, of these uh, pocket joints and these dominoes. And it, it appears as though your definition of fine furniture is in the form or the shapes or the materials, higher quality, like species of wood. Um, I guess my question is, is what, what defines something as fine furniture versus just functional furniture? Well, you're, you're, you've stumbled into my favorite subject, uh, the history of woodworking. Uh, you know, what, uh, you, um, I, 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 it, it has changed a lot in the, in the last few years. You know, when I first started, are you familiar with Sam Maloof? Okay, are you familiar with uh, George Nakashima? Uh, these, these are, maybe, maybe we'll have to put on something with a little bit of historical context. Um, there's two school, there were two schools back in the 50s, basically, and I'm, I'm generalizing a lot, the East Coast and West Coast. Uh, the East Coast guys, beautiful work, I, I love, uh, uh, George Nakashima is in that group. But they had very uh, what specific things that they would have to do. You know, the, the fine furniture had, you know, had to have dovetails and no metal fasteners and all that. And it's beautiful work. I mean, I, I, but I, I can't do that. I mean, I, I don't want to do that. Uh, I've actually done it, but I, it, it, the creativity is more, or they're more, they seem to care more about the uh, idea of the making as opposed to the object that they're making. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, in California, uh, and this is why Sam Maloof is so important, you study Sam Maloof and you will get an understanding of what we in California, or what he in California and people like me picked up from him is getting away from a lot of the traditional stuff. In fact, uh, Sam would use screws and and other things, and he was, people thought that he was a hack. And if you, you know, Sam Loof was one of the most important woodworkers, uh, according to President Carter, uh, and a good friend of Sam's was the, the best woodworker in the world. Uh, but he didn't care about the t tradition, he just cared about the object. That's what I care about. I just want to make things that are beautiful to me. You know, I, I may make something or uh, you may think, oh, that, I, I, don't, I really don't like that. Well, that's great. It, it gives you something to look at. Say, I don't like that, but if, if I did something like that, but I changed this guy here and I had this, and uh, it gets your creative side going and you do what you think is beautiful. We don't have to be thrown into this, you know, uh, us round holes mm -hmm. or round people being stuffed into a, a, a square shape. Uh, and that's what the, Cal my interpretation of the California uh, traditions or the West Coast tra uh, traditions of woodworking. I love what um, the, the fine woodworkers, you know, at the, the, the Bennett School of Fine Woodworking in Boston, I love what they do, but it's very, uh, it, it's in a tight box, but it's beautiful, it's perfect. Yeah, could I, uh, and my impression is, uh, as uh, just getting started with this is, uh, 
I, I think it for the definition of fine woodworking versus just making furniture, making a you know a bed frame or something of that type is is what you put into it. Like with materials, uh, how you know your finish, you know how how much time do you spend working on it, sanding it, and doing everything to make it well, one of the nicest pieces of furniture you could basically have in your home or wherever it's going to go, and uh, you know and, and basically. I think it starts with the type of wood you use. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you want to use one of the hardwoods to, you know, and make it. But it's basically something that's going to last 50 or 100 years. I think is is my definition. In my in my mind yeah, is, that. you know, it's something that you can make, and instead of tossing it, you're going to refinish it by sanding it for a couple yeah. hours and putting some more, a little more oil or whatever on it, and it's going to look just as good as it, as it did uh, the first day that uh, that you made it. And I don't know. If I, I I often think. You know, I, I, as I'm, the difference between what I do and I think a lot of other woodworkers is I am willing to spend, you know, th this, this took me six and a half hours, okay? I'm willing to spend a hundred hours if that's what it takes to make this beautiful it, for me. Uh, and I, I, I think, Dennis, you, you know, there's a big world out there and there's lots of other things to do, but I'm sitting in here grinding and making sure that these these hard lines, it, they're totally insignificant. But for lack of a better word, it amuses me and I think it's beautiful. The simple six hour piece, I could have stopped a long time ago, but now to me, this is a piece of fine furniture. Uh, and uh, I, I will enter this along with my other furniture in, in competitions and shows and we'll see how it goes. So, uh, it, I, I'm not. I don't know that much about the the central, like Michigan area, but they're uh, wonderful woodworkers. Uh, we I've heard from, but the California traditions really kind of upset the 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 norm the back in the '50s, the yeah. traditionalists and stuff. And Sam, actually, I had a, a guy, a major wood supplier. Uh, I told him that uh, I was I admired Sam Luth. He he owns. Uh, he passed away, but he owned uh, Rare Woods in, uh, in Maine. And I said, oh, I really like Sam Maloof's furniture. And he said, oh, he, he used uh, wood screws, you know, or drywall screws or something like that. And, and I, it, it, I said, okay, so? Uh, you know, Sam Maloof, is, is, you, you, his chairs now with metal screws in them are worth $100,000. So, <laughs> yeah. Art, Art Espinay Carpenter is another guy. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Another, uh, have you heard of the California roundover tradition? That was kind of, that, that's what the East Coast guys said about the West Coast guys that, oh, they're just, they just round over. Well, Art Espinay Carpenter, yeah. fortunate name, uh, basically everything he did was rounded over the router bit with the roundover, and he makes beautiful stuff. And he, he and he is the cause of the California roundover. It, 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 you look into this a little more and you'll hear that. Well, it's because of artist Espinay Carpenter and Sam Maloof. And Sam, and he, they were contemporaries and actually probably friends. Yeah. So anyway, I, I go on. Yeah, I appreciate the answer. I, I think what you do is amazing. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you sharing the, the I guess, the art versus the, the tradition, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, the, the, to... As I would say, uh, that, that's kind of one of our goals is, is for people just getting into it to, uh, you know, see, see an opinion outside of YouTube, right? So yeah. uh, every Monday, him and Ed Rizzardi will be on, the, you know, 5 p.m. Pacific time uh, talking about stuff and it's uh, a lot better than what you'll see on YouTube for you know, for perspectives on woodworking. And yeah, there, there's a lot of good yeah. woodworking things out there, but it, it, it does go more for the traditional, you know, the, the uh, cabinet makers and all that kind of stuff, which if I can tell, I, I know, I can tell a quick story, but I, I was a fine furniture maker and having tough time making a living. And I actually had a conversation with Sam Maloof, my, my idol, he lives five minutes away from here. Uh, and, and I, I put on a, a woodworking show and I invited him to show one of his pieces. And, uh, and I went to his home and, and uh, he, he did a gracious gentleman. 
uh, everything you could imagine, just just a, a normal guy. Uh, and he, I, I asked him if he would uh, submit one of his pieces to my little show, local thing. And he said, you know, I, I, I'd love to, but I can't because it would cost more to insure it, you know, than, than it would, you know, but because it was a free thing. And uh, then he, uh, we, we talked a little bit and I said, you know, it's it really, I really love doing this, Sam, but it's tough to make a living. And he said, I understand that. I've been fortunate. Some of the guys make cabinets. And of course, I was a furniture maker, fine furniture maker, and I was too good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a furniture maker, not a cabinet maker. But basically, Sam said it was okay to make furniture or make cabinets. So I actually became a cabinet maker because I had all the tools to make a living. And then I've always done the, the art, you know, this kind of stuff as I wish. There's no commercial motive to this. You know, I've made commissions stuff, but uh, it, it uh, now I say make or buy what I make. And that's all I, you know, if you don't like what I make, then we'll see you later. But, uh, you know, that's kind of the transition. You know, I, 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 I can do both. But this is what I wound up doing. So, okay. Now, we're only we're not going to do these on Tuesday anymore. Right. Okay. At least for Dennis and, and um, Mondays. Mondays. Monday is, is it? Basically, uh, every Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, is uh, about all we could really uh, get going here. So. Yeah, we um, committed to this, and uh, that's why we're doing it today. But from now on, it'll be every Monday and then maybe once a month we'll have a major, you know, something like this, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, and then, and then there's other people that uh, might be doing workshops of their own too, and I'm, try, you know, I'm talking to some people to, to do that too, so, uh, you know, if anyone's interested, just uh, let me know. Um, but anyways, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, thanks everyone for, uh, for coming and uh, hanging out with us for an hour, and uh, we'll hopefully see you on Monday. Any last uh, questions or words from anyone? Oh, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. I love doing it. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks for uh, thanks for showing up, and uh, we'll uh, see see everyone next time. Have a good day. Take care. Thanks, Dennis. See see you, uh, Kenny. And Kevin, that was fun.